Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. And today you join me on a well, rainy <laughs> day in Scotland, and I'm reporting my first mechanical issue with the BMW X3. Yeah, so anybody's watching the channel, picked this up September 2020. We've done about 9,000 miles on the car so far, and today it's thrown up its first engine warning light. So we're going to plug it in and see what happens. So unlock the car, go down and find the OBD reader underneath, which is down here. Go ahead and plug in the OBD reader, which I use for my Lexus SC. Just got that wee guy off Amazon, and we'll have a read of what the codes are going to be. So it looks like we've not got any codes coming up, uh, which is weird because we've got the engine warning light and we've also got the system in the car only registering the boot <laughs> being open, which is the issue, which is interesting. So the first issue that came apparent and popped up onto the BMW's iDrive was drivetrain issues. Uh, this came up and it said it was okay to drive, but take the car to the nearest kind of BMW uh, garage dealership to get serviced. Uh, so that was on a Friday afternoon and then the next morning went into the BMW and found out that none of the gadgets like the camera, uh, sat nav, all those kind of bits that run through the iDrive were able to work and you go into reverse and it would just come up with a kind of message and it said like close menu or close a message or something like that but it kept popping up. Uh, so we also had the drivetrain issue warning light popping up as well. Uh, so you could hardly move it anyway without having another issue and meanwhile the engine warning light was on. Uh, so I phoned BMW uh, that kind of mid-morning, maybe like at half eleven or eleven. On the Saturday they said that there would nobody that could deal with this kind of like service after sales until Monday morning. So I thought fine, I need to wait until Monday morning. Uh, and then kind of left the car on the Saturday. Sunday morning woke up and realised that the battery had died on the car and the car alarm said it to keep going off and there was like nobody to get that until the battery just fully died. So sit rep, car's died, alarm's going off, and can't unlock the car. So eight month old BMW is having a fit this morning. Uh, so that was really frustrating. I actually had to get the key, the kind of mechanical key out from underneath the fob and then open the door mechanically, but you couldn't access anything from the car, it was just totally dead. I managed to get the bonnet up. Uh, and I ended up having to use my Lexus SE to charge up the X3 battery just to get like the alarm off and things kind of sorted. Uh, but as soon as the car was kind of, say, a wee bit charged and running, the <laughs> BMW actually thought it was an X5 and on the digital dash it was presenting an X5 image, uh, which was interesting, uh, some sort of software glitch. And again, the iDrive was totally unusable. Uh, it came up with kind of looked like a checkered flag, that kind of silverfish <laughs> was just kind of waving. Uh, couldn't use again the camera, sat nav, the phone, anything, um, and even the main instrument display in front of me it was very limited with no sat nav there. And the heads up display uh, had completely like, went off, so there was just nothing that could do. So Monday comes and I phone the dealership, I phone BMW UK just to try and get a kind of feeler of where BMW is going to stand with regards to this car that's about eight and a half, nine months old and not working and having these issues. Uh, so the dealership were unable to look at it until I think the following week, which was a wee bit ridiculous, uh, and then they had no courtesy cars. Phone BMW UK, who gave them the due, were relatively decent at that point, uh, to send out a guy to confirm the car was like, undrivable, stroke broken. Uh, and he came out, we did say I think within an hour and a half and I think about four hours later the guy came out. The guy came out, uh, literally just looked at the car and could tell like, <laughs> it was undrivable. It was like a short and sweet experience and he said he need to come back the next day with a flatbed truck to take the car away. So that rules us on to the Tuesday. Uh, and meanwhile all this is going on, I was planning to leave to go to Goodwood Festival Speed in the car on the Wednesday, so all these things kind of happen just when you're trying to do something uh, with the car. If it happened the week before, it wouldn't have been as much a big deal, uh, but you're trying to do like a 10 hour drive 
uh, something like 400 odd miles and this car is acting up. So we're going to be coming on the Tuesday, take the car away, they say they're going to have a look at it uh, and they'll give me a call with an update. I never really heard anything on the Tuesday uh, and then it was a Wednesday morning. Uh, meanwhile, I was kind of packing to go to Goodwood, ended up having to use my mum's car to get to Goodwood just because I had no other transport to get down there so last minute. Uh, BMW at that time and still didn't offer a courtesy car and when I'd asked they just didn't have one available and it was like the following Monday which is just no use because that would have been about 10 days after the car had these issues. Uh, so I decided to go uh, to Goodwood, kind of still enjoy my holiday, took mum's car down and then BMW said they were no further forward with what the issue was uh, so they could ask if they could have it for another night and also asked if it could authorise a payment, I think it was £195, something like that. So I was like, fine, go ahead. And um, BMW kept the car overnight, Android Goodwood, they said they'd phone the next morning, and I think it was 3 o'clock in the first day afternoon they phoned to say the car had been <laughs> resolved, fixed, and they said it was a software issue, and it was ready for collection. Meanwhile, I was down in Goodwood, so I had to pick up the car the following a couple of days later. So overall, uh, what has my experience been? Now that I've got the car back, I've had it back about a week. Uh, in touch with the car's been fine since whatever BMW have done with the software. Uh, if it was a software, I don't know if it was maybe a recall behind the scenes or something technical because it was a drivetrain issue initially that led on to all these other issues. Uh, so I'm a wee bit disappointed that a car that was nearly £50,000 bought last year is having these issues and you're leaving you kind of stranded. Uh, also, the fact BMW, if you have a breakdown or an issue on a Friday afternoon stroke Saturday, they can't talk to you until the Monday. Uh, that was a bit annoying. Uh, dealership that we got the car from, a little bit let down as well, just because, again, they were waiting to think the 14th, which was going to be the following week. I think it was like going to be seven days after uh, the car had these issues before they could look at it. So phone BMW UK, they're a bit more proactive than to go to another dealer. Uh, but the lack of courtesy car from anybody was a little bit disappointing as well again because you've got the car under warranty you pay all that money for a car and you're just left hanging loose uh, to get out and about and where i live is about an hour west of glasgow uh, so it's very relatively remote a small town and it's not easy to get about and i really needed the car to get down to goodwood because we all live our lives and had plans and that was like my one big thing for this year was to go down and enjoy goodwood festival speed which luckily my mum lent me her car and I could do that uh, just because the benefit of her working from home allowed that but otherwise I'd have been forced to probably rent a car and drive down and that would have been another kettle fish but yeah so a bit poor service from BMW there it uh, kind of gave me some PTSD of when I had my 1 series and even my mum had a 5 series a few years ago that you feel like you're always fighting with BMW for a courtesy car uh, that seems to be a thing they've been well in my experience that's about 10 years, I think, we've had BMWs in the family and with various dealerships you're going previously it used to be you'd book a courtesy car like two weeks, three weeks in advance, turn up and they'd be like, oh, the person's not returned it and it would just be a fight for the general manager like every time, uh, I don't think there's been one smooth experience with that uh, so that's just a bit disappointing from my personal experience that after all these courtesy car <laughs> issues we've had about 10 years ago, they're still having these issues 10 years later, uh, and I think BMW should probably improve that being a premium brand that they are saying they are. The uh, car itself, I said, it's great, it's still of the X3, still impressed, it gets about 44, 45 miles to a gallon for being quite a large uh, 4x4. In UK <laughs> standards, if you're watching in the States, I know they're quite small, but 44, 45 miles to a gallon is pretty impressive. And it just goes to show, even uh, buying a new one, you're still going to have issues because I previously have had relatively new BMWs, I've had really old BMWs, I've had brand new BMWs and this is a brand new X3 and they've all had issues so that's something to uh, take note if you are a BMW, BMW? <laughs> BMW future owner or if you're looking at buying a BMW uh, it is highly likely you're going to end up with issues at some point but that's just my experience, family experience with various cars and models throughout the last 10 years with owning this brand uh, hopefully you guys <laughs> found this video useful, informative or entertaining. Uh, I just wanted to kind of explain what happened with the car and just bring it to the channel just because it's kind of like a BMW update and not one I thought I'd be bringing but it's not always going to be 
Sunshine and Roses and been a Biona ship and this is my first experience with it so far. So as always, thanks very much for watching if you got this far in the video. If you did, give me a like, subscribe to the channel below, comment below your questions, thoughts on this BMW X3 scenario and if you've had any BMW um, issues, I'd be curious to know your experience uh, below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao!